His love will reign forever. His love will reign forever. His love will reign forever. His love will Christmas this morning on this Christmas Sunday morning. Uh, I hope you've got a day full of activities. Our family's doing a little traveling on uh, Christmas morning and I'm glad to grab a spot and have a chance to visit with you a little bit. At Northbridge last night at our Christmas Eve service, that was our big weekend gathering uh, where we just started the Christmas holiday celebration with uh, all coming together and then on this Sunday morning Christmas Sunday morning we're encouraging families to get together read uh, the Christmas story out of Luke 2 uh, look at the Matthew first part of Matthew and uh, and and look at those accounts of Jesus birth uh, uh, this video uh, talk a few minutes here with you this morning I think Doug may be posting a song or two certainly the song we had last Sunday morning you can go back on our Facebook page and listen to that again that Doug shared with you so let me just share a thought with you this morning I want to use the the Christmas story that I used last weekend uh, in our Facebook live out of Luke 2 and I'm going to begin in verse 8 again and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night and an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them don't be afraid I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in clothes and laying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened to us, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. I just love the Christmas season. I, I love everything about it. I, I've said that before. I love the lights and the decorations. I, I love the songs that we hear on the radio and that we sing in church and in our car. I, I love the get-togethers with family and friends, whether they're in each other's homes or at restaurants or, you know, the favorite coffee shop. Uh, I love the fun and the laughter that happens when we tell stories on each other and remember Christmas's past, even if their details get embellished just a little bit more each year. I, I love the smell of pine trees and fresh baked cookies and maybe just a hint of fireplace smoke. You know, I, I love to see all the Christmas decorations for the season, and it, it doesn't matter whether it's artificial or or. Uh, uh, whether it's a small tinsel tree, I, I love to see a, a Christmas tree. Uh, maybe even if it's a, a, the old school cedar with the big old uh, old school bulbs and strands of popcorn, it doesn't really matter. Or maybe it's a beautiful ornate tree with every bulb and every ornament in exactly the right place, just like uh, my wife Vicki creates for our family every year. She, she just has a talent for that. If you've been in our home, you know she has that talent to make every space just absolutely absolutely beautiful whether it's a Christmas tree or the wall or the fireplace mantle it, it just always looks so festive and that and I just love that and, and I love the sight of presents uh, under the tree it's for me it's it's not the number of packages that matters it's just the appearance of gifts that are wrapped uh, 
and waiting under the tree for that special moment. At our house, they're usually wrapped in a variety of ways. If I wrap them, then they look pretty good. You know, I use wrapping paper and everything—a little, little scotch tape. You know, a little some of those little bows that they that you can buy in the big packages at Walmart, um, or you know, one that's recycled from last year or the year before. A little scotch tape, and hey, hey, they're good to go. A uh, little, little extra, little extra tape, and if I wrap them, they look pretty good. Now, when Vicky wraps a present, uh, they really look nice. You know, she takes time to pick out just the right paper and matches it to just the right bow, and and her folds are a little crisper than mine. And when she's done, well, that's a nice looking present. And, and then there's our daughter Amanda's wrapping. If you haven't seen an Amanda original, if you take Vicky's artistic eye of knowing just what looks just right. And then you add to that handmade ribbons and bows and, and the unique specially selected wrapping. You have an Amanda original. She, it's like a master artist when she's wrapping a present. She uses a theme every year. and Once you know her theme, you can spot her presence a mile away. Um, sometimes we take pictures of the, of the gifts that are wrapped before we unwrap them just because they're so beautiful and, and unique. I'm thinking if this teacher gig doesn't work out for her, she's got a career perhaps waiting in, in custom wrapping uh, world. One of the parts, though, of Christmas, I, I have to admit, that, that I don't enjoy very much. Um, I, I know you're probably thinking, well, it, he's going to say the shopping or the traffic or the schedule or, you know, the, the, the hustle bustle, uh, the amount of money that we spend, cleaning up after. But, but honestly, I, I can deal with all of that. The, there's one part of Christmas that maybe is the least favorite to me, and it's when the question gets asked. Maybe you know what I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, for me, it's when my wife, who everybody goes to for information, comes to me and says, what do you want for Christmas? Everybody's asking. I, I just don't like the question because 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 I don't not because I don't like presents. I mean, I like presents. Feel free, you know. I I love to get presents and love to give presents just like everybody else. I I, I just don't know the answer to the question. I, I I know it's easy for many, especially children and and our family. Uh, we have a little bit of tradition on Thanksgiving after the meal. We open up the the Thanksgiving Day paper. You know, the one that's six inches thick and five and a half is ads, and the other half inch has a little bit of news, but not very much. And and, and everybody begins to circle things and uh, identify things they want and for some reason I just never know what to circle I, I just don't know what to circle but you know, make no mistake Christmas is about giving gifts and receiving gifts uh, it is about uh, it is about that that those gifts that make up this day uh, so much and this Advent season at Northbridge we've been talking about the gifts that heaven offers us through this Christmas story. And we've looked at each one of those. And so on this Christmas Sunday morning, could we just recap those quickly and be reminded of while we're opening our gifts, the gifts that heaven has offered to us, made available to us. The first one is this, the gift of hope. Tony opened up the, our, our series uh, with this gift. And let me go back to verse 15 that I read a while ago. And it said the shepherds looked at one another, said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that the Lord has told us about. You, you can almost feel the anticipation in those words, the excitement in those words, the, the knowledge that, that what they were experiencing in life, there was something more, gave them hope. I, I don't know what they did that with, with the sheep and if they you know, left somebody back behind, everybody else went. I don't know, I don't know how that happened, but, but we, we see in that one phrase, hope is a powerful force. I mean, we're willing to, people are willing to drop everything to, to change course, to know that there is hope. We hear promises that if we'll do this or, you know, go there or elect this person or buy that thing, then life will be better. We'll feel better, be better, look better, do better. But, but at the end, most of those promises uh, all disappoint. The Christmas message to the shepherds that night was different, though. The message came directly from heaven. This wasn't a salesman or a politician offering another false promise. This was the Lord himself announcing that hope has come. And this was a gift that they so wanted to open. Christmas means that hope really has come. And it's found in Jesus whose birth we celebrate today. Thank you, God. 
for the gift of hope in Jesus. The second gift we talked about was the gift of love. In verse 11, that passage in Luke 2 said this, Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Every person that's ever been born needs to feel love. They need to know that they matter, that someone knows their name and cares about them. Every one of us need to feel loved. What the shepherds heard that night was that not only did someone know them and care about them, but that someone was heaven itself. God loved them so much that he gave himself. The Lord was leaving heaven and coming to earth as a savior to, rec uh, to rescue them. Now, now, that was a gift of love. And, and it was offered not just to the shepherds that night so long ago, but, but to you and to me today. That's a gift I want to reopen every single day, not just on Christmas. The reminder of, of the magnitude of God's love that caused him to create Christmas to start the rescue story by sending Jesus to be born of a manger. Thank you, God, for the incredible gift of love. The third gift was the gift of peace. In verse 14, the angels were singing and, and said, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. Peace on earth has always been a, a, a wish, a desire for all of us, but it's always been elusive uh, as well. Many have promised it, many have promoted it, but, 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 but no matter the war, the concessions, or the deal, or the best intentions, it, it never holds, at least not in nations and communities. But this promise of peace on earth that the angels announced that night was different. Jesus explained when he had grown up and finished his ministry on earth in John 14, 27, he, he said this, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace, key point, my peace I give you, not as the world gives peace. So with my peace, don't let your heart be troubled or afraid. You, you see, Christmas peace is different. Heaven's peace is not the absence of conflict or pain in our life, but it's the ever-abiding presence of God in the midst of that pain, even while we're still going through those difficult circumstances. It's confidence and fearlessness that no matter what we experience in this life, God is always with us. And at the end, he's in charge. We have that confidence, and that is heaven peace. That is Christmas peace in our lives. Thank you, God, for the wonderful gift of peace. The last gift of the four was verse 10, the gift of joy. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. We talked about this last Sunday morning on our North, uh, uh, Facebook Live uh, broadcast. Good news, great joy. I, I mean, you can almost see through our mind's eye uh, the messengers running through the streets and shouting in exuberance that a new day has come because of these gifts, not the kind we normally get, but these gifts heaven's gifts there is great joy and there can be great joy in our life christmas is indeed a joyous celebration i i hope as you're going through the day if you're able to connect if you're if you're away from family and away from friends and don't have things planned today then you know my encouragement would be to maybe just get out and and, and go someplace pop in a coffee shop uh, get get with somebody get on the phone get somebody on the phone and and have a conversation and enjoy the day enjoy the connection christmas is indeed a joyous celebration and then and then there is uh, the gift of Jesus who was born that day. So here's my, here's my prayer for us this morning that we'll just enjoy this day, that we'll enjoy it to uh, its fullest, that we'll open presents, that we'll give presents and receive. But in each one of those uh, uh, moments of opening and celebrating and enjoying, some, some of the gifts that you're going to open are going to be really good, I, I have no doubt. And some will be... Well, let's just say, let me encourage you to be kind, okay? You know, maybe it, it's okay to fake it uh, in, in, this, in, in this moment uh, to, uh, to express how much you appreciate the trouble someone went to to, to buy something. But, but let me promise you this, today available for, for you, heaven has some gifts, hope, peace, love, joy. These are gifts that are ours, not just on Christmas Day, but on every day. And 
take a moment to just say a prayer and thank God for the gifts that he gave you, offers to you and to me on this Christmas day. Love you. Again, my family and I are doing some traveling and, and away wherever you are. May this Christmas be a joyous celebration and a reminder of, of God's great love and grace for us that make Christmas possible. Thank you. See you.